Hey guys, let's talk about um, our fourth part of our series, which is sensory, perceptual, and vision problems. And these are all related to these are the problems that we have in our sensory system, in our perception, and in our visual capabilities after having a stroke. So what kind of sensory problems can a patient with a stroke have? Um, first and foremost, they can have decreased sensation or paresthesias, and this is gonna put them at a higher risk for injury. So um, kind of like we talked about in the motor section, um, excuse my burps, um, I need to monitor their limbs and make sure that they are, um, since they cannot feel them or they may have decreased sensation, just think kind of like a diabetic patient. I need to monitor closely, look for breakdown, look for skin integrity issues, um, look for any signs of injury to that limb that they may not be able to feel or experience. <clears throat> also need to assess um, their peripheral neurovascular system. Are they getting perfusion to that limb? because um, they definitely can have circulation issues after having a stroke. And then turning them every few hours to, um, you know, kind of keep that, um, that limb moving and keep it, uh, and not just their limbs, but, you know, of course, their entire body, but just to keep them safe. So remember, um, patients with a stroke, it's the entire side of their body. It's what's called hemiplegia. And so you want to look whatever their weak or affected side is, you want to support it with pillows, use adaptive devices, make sure that you're doing range of motion, doing whatever you can, and then doing frequent assessment to make sure that there's no injury or breakdown to it. There's also what's called agnosia. And what that is, is kind of like this picture up here on this slide where a patient um, loses the ability to recognize objects, people's and uh, people and things. So this means they can lose the ability to recognize family members. They can lose the ability to recognize familiar places, who they are, what regular objects are. They may look at this apple and be like, I don't know what that is. And you ask them, what is this? And they're like, I don't know. And so, um, you know, these patients are going to need some cognitive therapy. Um, we're going to usually try to put familiar things and um, objects nearby, family being nearby and kind of reminding them and things like that. It's going to be very helpful. Um, but we're going to just be helping them to put some of those connections back together that they lost after having their stroke. There also can be perceptual problems. And um, these last two problems, the perceptual and the vision, people get these mixed up a lot. So hopefully I can break these down and um, help to differentiate them so they're not as confusing in your head. So first there's what's called left-sided neglect. Now, if you remember left-sided, it's, it's talking about the side of the body, but this um, left-sided neglect actually happens with people that have had a right side of their brain stroke. So in other words, if I've had a right brain or a right hemispheric stroke, I'm at high risk to have the left-sided neglect. Now remember, if kind of taking you back, those are the people that are really impulsive. They do not know that something is not right. They're very um, fast moving. They don't realize they had a stroke. Um, they have a lot of issues with uh, being in reality. They really don't understand what's going on. So what happens with um, these patients with left side of neglect, it's not a vision problem. It's not, um, uh, what do you call it? A, like a sensory thing. It's literally a perception that they are completely neglect the left side of the, the space in front of them. So if they were in a room um, and there was a plate of food in front of them, they would only eat the right side of the plate. So kind of look at this clock up here in this picture. This person has left side of neglect. All they see is the right side. Like they are incredibly focused on that. Like they are not, like the left side does not even exist for them. So this is how they see the clock um, when you have left sided neglect. And so these patients there, it's literally an attention problem. Cause remember with these right sided, they're very impulsive. They're not seeing things or understanding things clearly. This just is kind of another piece of that. So they're not giving attention to the left side of the room. So what can I do? Um, so, you know, obviously this can be, um, an issue, especially like, you know, if there's anything like safety issues and stuff like that for things that might be in their left side. But my job as the nurse is pretty much to encourage them to give attention to that left side. So when I come in the room, I'm going to talk to them from that left side and give them a reason to have to turn their head and give their attention to me. Sometimes they're not going to want to in the beginning, but the more that I work with them, the more that I give them motivation and reasons to look and give attention to that left side, the better they're going to get at that. 
I'm going to put things on that left side to give them reason. So I always tell the funny story that when I did stroke rehab, um, that there was a patient who had this left side of neglect and what they did to give him motivation to look to the left side is they actually put a picture of a woman in a bikini that was like a billboard um, on his left side. And so it was giving him motivation to keep looking to that left side um, to actually pay attention to that side. Um, so whatever works, whatever motivation they need, but you know that this patient, even though they don't want to give attention to it, it's not that they can't see it. They just don't want to give attention to it because of the lack of blood flow to their brain from their stroke. This can get better, but as the nurse, we're just going to be encouraging them to look over towards their left side anytime that we can. There's also vision problems. And, you know, I usually call this problem, this main vision problem, HH, because it's very hard to pronounce. And, you know, I always tell students, I'm going to say this once this semester, and this is the only time you get to hear me say it, but homonymous hemianopsia um, is uh, HH, <laughs> is what I'm going to call it from the rest of this PowerPoint. Effectively, this is a vision issue. And this is where they um, can see only out of one side of both of their eyes. So kind of think if your eyeball vision, like, you know, you're seeing straight out and you're seeing, you know, like, a, um, a picture of something, you're only seeing um, in each eyeball, you're only seeing half of your visual field. So in other words, like literally half of your um, each eyeball is not seeing what it's supposed to see. So it's kind of like this picture is showing what one eye would be seeing. One of your eyes, it's literally like you can't see part of a visual field. So this is a vision problem related to the stroke. This is a huge safety concern because if you're if you have a blind spot, you can have falls or other things happen. So the big thing that we teach these patients is because they have a blind spot, they have to scan their field. So kind of like you have to look in a mirror and you have to adjust the mirror and look before you change lanes. These patients need to scan the room because they have that blind spot they have to use their head to look around the room and see if there's anything in their way um, or anything that's going to cause a safety issue so just kind of retraining them how they're approaching these situations um, and how they're going to um, do it so like when they're eating their food they're going to need to scan their plate otherwise they're going to miss out on some of their food because they can't see it because their vision is literally has a blind spot um, so yeah so hopefully that kind of breaks that down that we can have sensory issues where they can't feel or sense things the same way or they may not recognize things. There's perceptual issues where they don't perceive um, a certain space like the left side of neglect and then there's vision issues where they have like a blind spot where they cannot see um, out of um, both of their eyes they can't see out of um, part of their visual field in both of their eyes and so they're going to need to scan their visual field in order to be able to be safe. So hopefully this kind of breaks down some of those issues and gets you uh, more prepared to take care of these patients. Check you next time.